Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to Dragon Ball Nation. Today I'm giving you guys an episode 67 review for Dragon Ball Super. Sorry if it's a few hours late. I had to actually catch this on Crunchyroll. So I'm a little bit later than usual. I had a big parade going on outside my house and uh, it made it pretty impossible to record and even pay attention to the episode. So I got this now and this is an interesting episode. We got some interesting tidbits, some details, uh, not a lot of action, but a nice wrap up to the Future Trunks Returns Saga, Future Trunks Zamasu Saga. The arc is over, essentially, and then next episode we get something a little bit different with what looks to be some filler, but that's in the next episode. This episode was pretty solid, and like I said, a good wrap-up to what we had before. Trunks finishes, quote-unquote, finishes off Zamasu with the Genki Dama sword, the spirit bomb sword, and it is, and Goku does say in the episode that that sword looked like it was a spirit, you know, a Genki Dama, almost, so, I, that is pretty much what it was, there's still no real explanation on how it worked, I mean, I guess you can just gather energy up and it works, I mean, when you really think about it, the spirit bomb's pretty simple of a move, it's a pretty simple move, even though it did take Goku a while to master, obviously, on King Kai's planet, but, I mean, it's just gathering energy, right? I guess so. Yeah, that's kind of weird, but, you know, whatever. <laughs> but if you saw the episode, you know that's not the end of the Zamasu. Zamasu splits up. His kind of spirit, I guess, fills up the entire planet. And he actually kills every single person on the Earth. Everyone's dead. Kind of like how Super Buu did in the Buu Saga, except it took Zamasu forever to, to uh, eventually do that. He kind of cleanses the world of all mortals by going into this giant form. And Gowasu says he's essentially given up his godly uh, body or his godly position or whatever you want to call it to essentially embody what he calls justice. And, I mean, that's how they phrase it, the Crunchyroll subs. I don't know how accurate that is because I know that the Crunchyroll subs can be a little bit off sometimes from what I've seen. But... Before he actually eliminates everyone, Goku and Vegeta try to power up, and they can't power up to Super Saiyan Blue, and the reason being is that when they did the final Kamehameha as Vegito, it drained all their energy, which I think is kind of... That's such BS, honestly. I really don't understand how that works. Number one, they barely look like they were tired out when they did the, the Kamehameha. They still had energy left. So, maybe the... I could... Okay, I could see that... Since there is a time limit on the Batara Fusion now, and Super Saiyan Blue obviously seemed to speed that time limit up, I could see the, the Final Kamehameha being what really separates them, but they didn't separate right after that. They, they went to go throw a punch, then they separate. But to have them be drained of all their energy from a previous fusion, which in reality is an entirely different entity, really, than, than a... Uh, than either of them. Vegeta was his own entity. He shouldn't really be sharing key necessarily, right? I mean, especially if it's one thing to have them be weakened before they fuse. That's why they took the Sensu Beans. It's another thing for the fusion to drain their power individually. It's, it's just very strange to me. Guess we'll have to deal with it, but I think it's just kind of lame. Um, not like powering up really would have done anything, so I think they could have just not had that in there really at all. Because, as you saw in the episode, uh, if you watched it, they did a Final Flash, Gallic Gun, Kamehameha, Trio type of blast up at Zamasu, which eventually really, it did amount to nothing. Then he kind of obliterated everyone on Earth, uh, aside from the Z, you know, Goku, Vegeta, Mai, Bulma, Gwasu, Zamasu, and Trunks. Uh, everyone else is dead. So, Mai and Trunks are like crying because it's like, it's all over, right? And it's in a very, it is a really well done emotional scene to have them crying there and having everything be lost for them, right? Everything, essentially. So, that scene happens, they get that little pickup, and Goku goes in for a sensu bean to kind of recuperate his power. He goes into his pocket to get a sensu bean and actually pulls out the button that Zeno, the, you know, the Omni King, had given him. Uh, oh, a few, quite a few episodes back, actually. And we knew this button would be used eventually, we just didn't know exactly when. We, I think a lot of people are starting to think they wouldn't actually use this arc. Of course, when we saw the preview and, of course, the synopsis for 67, we all knew that it was going to be Zeno coming back because of the button. 
Um, he comes in, and this is a different Zeno. It's not the same one we know. This is a future Zeno. It's a different timeline, and it actually does apply to him. He's not someone that can go. It doesn't seem like any single being in Dragon Ball can exist throughout all timelines as one entity. You know, there's different versions throughout timelines, if that makes sense. Um, which is interesting to me. I mean, it's not like it doesn't make sense. It does make sense. I was just expecting there to be a being that maybe would transcend all the timelines and not be affected by um, things like, you know, the splits in the timeline and stuff like that. I just thought that that maybe would be one character, but, I mean, if Zeno gets affected, then, I mean, everyone really would, right? And before they actually start talking, uh, Goku and Zeno, one thing that I thought was interesting is that Beerus and Whis in the present timeline could actually feel the energy coming from the future. That was pretty cool. So I don't know if it's... I don't know if he's just like that powerful or if it's just so evil or what exactly is going on. But they could feel it. They could feel the energy. But... Zeno doesn't know who Goku is, right? Has no idea. And I thought maybe that it was like, oh, he just forgot or something, right? Because we don't really know Zeno's personality all... You know, the whole personality of him all together, right? Uh, but he's going on like, you know, this place looks terrible. Did you do this, Goku? Uh, and Goku points up and says, no, that guy did it. Pretty nasty, right? You should probably erase him. And then Zeno says, like, you're right. This world will disappear completely. And everyone gets to the time machine. Uh, uh, Supreme Kai and Gowasu. They teleport? I'm guessing they... I mean, they didn't get on a time machine, so I'm guessing that they went to the their own uh, planet, right? So, that happens. The world's completely destroyed. Zamasu's completely destroyed, presumably. And then they get back to the present, meet everyone back up. They're like, oh, you know, you're back. Future Mai meets present Mai. And Trunks, present Trunks, kid Trunks meets future Mai. And he's like... He's probably thinking to himself, damn, I better, whew, damn, I better, I better hook up with this kid next to me, you know, referring to Kid Mai. He, like, blushes when he sees Future Mai, I mean, there's only so many things that could be going through his head, right, guys? Like, seriously. After Goku and the gang get back to the present, you know, meet up with everyone, square things up, be like, you know, oh, the future's okay, everything like that, we get... Goku going back to the future. The world's gone. Zeno's just there kind of ragged on in the air, just floating around. And he's like, hey, come with me. And he brings him to the Zeno of the present timeline. And that turns out to be the friend that Goku promised he'd bring back. Obviously, he wouldn't have known that in advance or anything like that. But that is the friend that Goku brings. So he's just like, oh, who's this? They have no idea that they're copies of each other, essentially, it seems. Um, so that is the friend that Zeno gets as well as the Grand Priest, you know, the shorter Weiss looking guy. <laughs> That's actually Weiss's dad. <laughs> I, just, I don't think anyone expected this. And, I mean, you know, it could be like, oh yeah, they're the same race or whatever. They're both angels, right? Did you really expect? So it's Vados and Weiss's dad, essentially, he says. But they go back to Earth, have a little party, feast type of thing at the end there. And they're kind of trying to figure out, like, you know, how do we fix this? How, since the, you know, future is gone, really. Completely gone. So, Whis basically says that we have to go back, bef we have to go to the future, but before Beerus died, um, you know, how Goku Black and Zamasu went through and killed all the gods, they have to go back before that point, and they have to beat Zamasu and seal him away. Basically, Whis has a way to seal Zamasu that's way better than the Maf a Mafuba-style jar or anything like that. Doesn't go into detail on what that is, but I'm very curious. He's, I don't know if he's going to put him in his staff or something, but it's going to be very interesting to see how that is. He also suggests that uh, asking Beerus to destroy him, which everyone's like, oh, you know, he couldn't possibly destroy an immortal, and then Beerus is kind of like, you know, oh, you rely on gods too much. Something like that. So basically, it means that Beerus could have even... Uh, essentially, I could be wrong. I could be absolutely wrong about this. Essentially, what I gathered from it was that Beerus could even have destroyed Immortal Zamasu, which is something I've been saying forever, guys, that I feel like with Beerus's powers and techniques, I feel like even him as the God of Destruction could be able to take out Zamasu. So it was very interesting 
to get that information to us. Um, we says, you know, you got, he, he basically says, trunks of mine. He's like, oh, you two are going to end up together. Is you, you guys okay with that? Both of them are fine. I would be fine too. Uh, I don't see why it wouldn't be. And the episode kind of closes up with them leaving. Uh, it's a, a very tearjerker moment. Uh, Gohan and Piccolo showing up when Trunks and Mai are leaving the time machine. Trunks crying, being like, you know, I couldn't keep this world protected for you, Gohan. Having flashbacks for future Gohan. Definitely could be an emotional scene for uh, quite a few people. By the way, Gohan also looks like he was uh, training with Piccolo again. I mean, he was sweating, so... I mean, I assume they were, they were uh, training. But all in all, guys, it was a really good episode. A nice wrap-up to this arc. It was nothing action-packed, but we had some nice dialogue, some cool scenes, and uh, information that we learned, uh, stuff like that. But it was overall a very good episode indeed, and a very nice wrap-up to one of the best storylines Dragon Ball's come up with, in my opinion. One of the most interesting arcs. The thing about, and I'm going to do a future video, you know, wrapping up this arc, doing a whole discussion. I'm sure uh, Danny, you know, I'm sure Geekdom will as well. I would expect it from him. Um, you know, all the people in our little crew, I'm sure, will do their own videos, and I might do my own. I don't know who's planning on doing it, but I'm sure you can expect tons of YouTubers to do it. But good thing is that we all have different opinions, hopefully. And uh, don't watch each other's videos to uh, steal opinions, I guess. I don't know. I try to stay away from everyone else's videos most of the time. But it was a good way to end the arc. And, and it's an amazing thing to think that this was only... It started in episode 47 and ends in episode 67. So it was a 20-episode arc. And the amount of information that was covered, uh, told to us, the story that was told, it, it felt much larger than 20 episodes, in my opinion. And it was very impressive of what they filled in in that time span. Not a lot of downtime, and it was just consistently great and fantastic every single episode. So guys, that's my review. It might seem like a little bit light on the actual review part, but quite honestly, all I could say is it was great, and you know what my thoughts were on some of the stuff that were said. Um, wasn't a lot of action, so really all I can talk about is a lot of information we got. But overall, I thought it was fantastic. Great way to end the arc. Let me know you guys' thoughts down below. What did you think of this arc overall? What would you rate it out of 10? Uh, what would you rate it in terms of Dragon Ball stories in general? Give me your thoughts down below. But other than that, guys, thank you guys for watching this episode, or video, I should say. I will do my episode 68 predictions tomorrow, so stay tuned for that if you're interested. Other than that, thank you guys for watching, and of course, I'll catch you later.